Hello and welcome. This is a presentation blog on your key performance indicator, your effective hourly rate. Now, you may not have a key performance indicator, you may not have any, you may not have this particular one. And what I want to do today is explain to you why your effective hourly rate is so important and why it is a no-brainer to put it on as one of your key performance indicators. I agree it's not a key uh, predictive indicator, and which are much better and more powerful, but nevertheless, this is an excellent one. If you are looking at starting on key performance indicators, you could do a lot, lot, lot worse than starting with this one. And the good news is it is so easy. So let's, let's start it. I'll show you, I'll be discussing what it is, uh, why it's important, how to calculate it, and even uh, point you in the right direction for what to do next. Just to start off with, my name is Gordon De Silva. I am a qualified chartered accountant, have been a chartered accountant for many decades now, and I have tremendous experience in helping business owners run better businesses. It's what we do in our profit multiplier program through our consulting business, and uh, um, besides being an award winner, I'm also an Amazon best-selling author, and of course, I'm also the inventor of the Profit Multiplier Program, which helps business owners double their profits. So that's enough about me. Let's get started into uh, the content. Uh, what is your key effective hourly rate? What this is, is basically the rate that you work for in your business. Your key predictor, it's a, it's a key performance indicator. It's not a predictive indicator because it tells you how you've done, not how you're going to do. Uh, key predictive ind indicators are all about uh, how you're going to do, which are really superbly powerful. This one is a, is a performance indicator. It tells you how you've done. And why is your effective hourly rate important? It's because, you know, you, you, I presume you started your business to work less, earn more, have a better quality of living. If that's about right for you, you know, two, of the, two out of the three would do for me, then you're in the right place. To do that, you need to measure how you're doing towards that goal. Uh, don't you think that's right? And you know, I, I don't apologize for using numbers in many of my uh, metrics and many of my coaching sessions because as Warren Buffett says, numbers is the language of business. If you don't understand your numbers, you're not going to be able to control your business. You're not going to have great control of your business. And I, I will almost bet that if somebody had exactly the same business as you, but had control of their numbers and you didn't, they would make more money running the same business uh, than you would. Okay. Because it is just so critical. And if you understand it, you, you know where to put your focus on. And, and there's a whole range of benefits. And your effective hourly rate gives you exactly that. It tells you exactly how much you're earning for the time you're spending in your business. Now that you may say, well, you know, um, so let, let me give you a, a concrete example to make it a bit easier. If you were a plumber and, you know, my, my plumber charges me 60 pounds an hour, which is equivalent of probably $90 an hour or you know, in, if you're Australian dollars and maybe, you know, $120 an hour, whatever, you know, don't worry. It's, the numbers itself are, itself are not important. The concept is, right? So if I said to him, what is your hourly rate? He may say 60 pounds an hour. So if he spends an hour doing some work for me, he gets 60 pounds. If he spends two hours, he gets 120 pounds and so on. You will appreciate that doesn't take into account maybe the cost of getting materials, taking his van and getting his van filled up with, uh, with uh, diesel or petrol, whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't uh, include the cost of getting parts, uh, driving here, driving back, doing his bookkeeping, his marketing, his emails, his billing, his collection, his banking, his... Uh, the whole range, right? It doesn't include all of that. And what the effective hourly rate does then is bring that into effect. And you will appreciate when you start bringing all of that, uh, those extra chores into uh, the calculation, 
you begin to have a significantly different hourly rate than what you may charge. Now, in the service businesses, you know, hourly rates are quite quite normal. In normal businesses, you may not. You may not be the, the person delivering a service. You may run a business that um, supplies product, in which case the number of hours you worked is, you know, is also Im- impacted by what you do and how you do it and what team you have. And that's effectively what it's going to lead us to. So let's. So now that we know what the eff- effective hourly rate is, uh, why is it important? I think I've already covered this, but let's just reiterate. It's important because unless you know whether you're getting more or less efficient, you, you, you're just flying by the seat of your pants. And I've already explained to you that doing that is really not the best way of controlling your business. Let me, uh, let me ask you this. Would you be happy if you went and bought a tank of uh, petrol or gas, or whatever you call it, in your, wherever you come from, and you only used half of it and the other half drained away because it was leaking. Would you be happy with that situation or would you want to get that fixed, right? I, I suspect I can hear what you said, of course, I'd want to get it fixed, right? However, if you don't have control over your numbers in your business, you could be effectively putting resources into your business, including your time, effort, energy, risk, um, stress, whatever it is, and half of it leaking out and the other half being used to provide the profit and income that you get. You can begin to see now why it's so important to take control of your business rather than just fly by the seat of your pants, right? And so it is critically important uh, to, to know because once you manage it, you can then measure the factors that contribute to it. Does that make sense? You know, so if you don't uh, measure it and go, well, that's quite low, I need to increase it, what do I need to do to increase it? That is the, is the reason we're doing it. We're not doing it just for a, a academic calculation and going, oh, it's this number, isn't that brilliant or isn't it terrible? It's to create an action. Now, when I had a strategy session with one of my new clients last week, we always start our, our process with a strategy session. And one of the things I do with all my new clients is, is look at their effective hourly rate and compare it to what their aspirations are and, and certainly to key team members. And we'll do that in a minute and I'll show you how to do that. And uh, he was devastated when I showed him on my calculator uh, what his effective hourly rate was. And you know, it really made him sit up. And from that moment on, he was hanging on to each word because he wanted to get away from that situation. And he called me in because he wasn't happy with his profitability. But when he saw how, how hard he was working for how little money, he, he was doubly committed to, to taking his business forward in a different way to where he's been in the last three years, which has got him trapped into this working harder for less money, which is, which is really um, a bad place to be. No one started the business, in my experience, from talking to hundreds and hundreds of uh, businesses around the country and even around the world, you know, being uh, to events in, uh, talking to events in Australia, New Zealand and America, uh, and of course uh, the UK. Uh, no one has ever told me they got into business because they like working harder for less money. It's just, it is, you know, there are people in charities who, who may do charitable work because of that. But in, in business, even the, you know, the, the directors of charities own money, right? And their, their job is to create more value for the charity, isn't it? So it's not, it's not hugely different. We are all producing value. So that's why it's important. Uh, let's look at how you calculate it. This is really quite a, quite a good one because it's gonna, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of uh, how to calculate it for you and your team so you can begin to see what the effect is. And I'm not here to, to try to be nice to you and make you feel good, right? This is not the purpose of that. You've probably got enough people around you to do that. I'm here to sort of create some sort of catalyst that will wake you up. I, you know, when I was talking to this client on the strategy session last week, I talked about his fairy tale he was telling himself. And the fairy tale he was telling himself kept him trapped in this low income spiral, work harder spiral. And part of what I do in my blogs and in my strategy sessions and my coaching sessions and my quick fix calls, all of these things are to create a bit of a catalyst, a bit of, you know, it's a bit like 
putting a, a grain of sand in your shoe and it becomes an irritant and you can't ignore it and you've got to do something about it, right? Uh, it's a bit like that. And, and so I don't, I don't apologize for that. It's part of the process of getting people to change habits, which are hard enough for the best of times in business when there's so many calls on your attention. And we talked about the plumber with his marketing and admin and IT and billing and cash flow and uh, quoting and emailing and invoicing and uh, marketing and uh, doing his blogs, maybe his podcasts, maybe his uh, working out his prices, looking, buying parts, keeping up to date, uh, going and doing more training. All of those things, so many things, you can easily get caught into a routine which is not uh, helping your business grow. So let's look at the how we calculate it. So the first thing we want to do is look at what your personal income is. This is one of the elements of the calculation. It is ridiculously simple, but you know, in case you've never done it before, I don't need you to think, oh, this is some sort of accountant job, or this is some sort of financial director speak, or this, you know, this is some mumbo jumbo, I'll never get this. I'm, you know, I'm just a you know, architect, or I'm just a uh, sales director or I'm just a, you know, a, a doctor, or, you know, that, that's not relevant, right? Uh, it's so easy to calculate it and everyone can do this. Uh, so you look at your personal income. So let's take, for example, your personal income was uh, $60,000 or pounds, depending on where you are in the world. I'm in the UK, so I'm going to settle for pounds when I talk to you on this blog. Uh, but if you're in the US or Australia or, you know, um, France or Germany, wherever it is, you know, to just adjust the numbers for yourself, right? And so we've got a personal income of sixty thousand. Now, by the way, when I if you if you see my blog on the uh, growth roadmap, you will see that sixty thousand pounds. I would call it startup mode or struggle mode, uh, and you know it's not a significant amount of income for a business owner because they've got so much risk. They've got so many. Uh, responsibilities are going to pay wages and the rates and the rents and the insurance and the telephone and the taxes you know they're going to do the books and report to the uh, irs or the inland revenue whatever it is you know it's not a huge amount and um but you know let's take that as an example because it's not an, an uncommon an amount okay now let's look at the hours work now in most jobs you probably have a 40-hour week or 35-hour week for many jobs nowadays uh but let's look at uh, the a business owner of an owner-managed business. Typically, when I talk to business owners, and I add in all the different things, I add in things like their marketing time, their writing emails time, they're taking calls time, they're thinking about the business and trying to work things out and, and cash flow time and banking time and negotiating contracts and buying stuff and selling stuff and uh, keeping up to date and market, you know, the whole range of things they're doing many more than 40 hours a week and some uh, are doing 80 hours a week and so on. But in this example, I want to keep it reasonably sensible and say, look, let's assume a 55 hour week. Uh, you know, somebody, the owner may get up at seven in the morning and they may finish uh, work at seven in the evening. You know, that, that's uh, 12 hours, right? They may have a half an hour break uh, or, or a couple of half hour breaks, but they're still thinking about their business, maybe even taking a call or reviewing some documents or something while they're having their sandwich. They may also work 47 hours, uh, 47 weeks a year. So the 55 is the, is the number of hours and the 47 is the number of weeks that uh, you earn, you work. Uh, you know, in, uh, so that's a couple of weeks holiday, a couple of weeks public holiday, you know, maybe that's about it. Uh, and if you did that, and many, you know, for example, in the strategy call that I had, or strategy session I had last week, the, the person was working many more. He's actually working 52 uh, weeks a year and his numbers were bigger than this. So, but if you did 55 hours a week, 47 weeks a year, the total number of uh, hours worked is 2,586, uh, 85. Okay. So now it's really simple. The effective hourly rate is just the total income. And you can do this by month or by week, but typically a year to start off with and then by month to make sure you're moving in the right direction. And it's divided by the, the number of hours you worked in the calculation just above. And in this particular case, which is not un, unreasonable, and it's probably better than some, the effective hourly rate is 23 pounds um, 21. 
Okay, so that's nice and easy. You can see, you know, I, I've talked around the subject, but it, it would probably take about, you know, 30 seconds or two minutes or something to work it out if you've never done it before. And once you've done it once, the second time will probably take you 30 seconds. Okay. So now let's look at the employee. I, and then the, for this uh, strategy session, I, I looked, picked a, a manager, one of his managers. These are not his numbers, by the way. I've just made these numbers up. But the, the principle stands. Uh, the manager, let's, uh, let's argue, was paid a personal income, a you know, wage of £45,000. I'm going to ignore the extra taxes and stuff that you may have to pay for employee in the UK. It's like 13% more. You know, that just complicates. It's unnecessary for this purpose today but you should really put that in to the calculation so let's say we pay in 40 45,000 pounds uh, or her and the hours they work 40 hours contractual and they work 44 hours a week so they have uh, 52 weeks a year you get uh, four weeks holiday two weeks public holidays like bank holidays and things right so that's six weeks off and and then you may have some sick pay and you know uh, dentists and doctor visits and you know my child is ill or whatever else I work from home uh, and let's say that's true then they're working uh, um, and they may take an hour for lunch which reduces but let's ignore all of that 1760 hours is the is the number of hours they work again the same calculation 45,000 divided by 1760 and they have an effective RE rate of 2557. Now, we just worked out that the owner, with all the extra responsibilities, we're getting 23, and this guy's getting, or this girl's getting 25. Without all those responsibilities, they just go home, and they, you know, when they go on holiday, they relax. When the owner goes on holiday, he's still thinking business, right? That is different. And why would the owner get paid less than the manager? Now, uh, you know, when you start taking the real hours, sometimes it gets even worse than this. And in the case of my strategy session, which inspired this blog post, uh, it, it was much worse than this. So and he definitely wanted to do something about it, which is fantastic, which is the idea of it. And now we can track this on a month by month basis through the profit multiplier program and make sure that uh, we take the steps. Uh, you know, so if, to give you an example, when I'm uh, preparing for this blog, uh, this is the second time I'm recording this because the first one the recording didn't work. Uh, the the uh, time uh, I'm putting to my effective hourly rate, it is fair to calculate this in. And once I've recorded it, I'm done. I upload it and my team then take care of putting the video on. They take care of uh, the transcription. They take care of the links. They take care of putting it on Facebook and so, da, 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 and so on. Uh, you know, I do my, my one hour or hour and 50 minutes or hour and 10 minutes or 36 minutes and it's done, right? That's how I've improved my effective hourly rate. So what are you going to do with this information? What could you do next? The first thing I suggest you should do is get straight to it and spend five minutes uh, on calculating your effective hourly rate and for some of your team in your, in your organization, see how yours compares to your team. Consider what responsibility they have and consider what responsibility you have. And just consider whether that's an irritant or not. Is that going to um, push you into taking some action? Or are you just going to go, well, that's what it is, tough, never mind, let's go back to my normal routine. If you're like 80% uh, of the businesses, uh, you'll just go, well, yeah, it's a bit of a pain, not terribly good. And you'll carry on tomorrow as if nothing had happened and there's no, uh, there's no effect. If you're like the 20% who really want to get things going, then you're going to do something about it and begin to work some plans to change the, the effective hourly rate upwards okay, for yourself. And maybe even for your team, who knows, right? So the first thing is calculate yours. And then the second thing is calculate some actions to increase it and improve it and put it on your list of key performance indicators. You know, when we start with the profit multiplier program, we typically start with two or three. And over the course of a year, we increase it to sort of five to 10 because the idea is not to overwhelm us. The, the idea is to use numbers we can use to improve our business, not to create numbers for numbers sake. But numbers for numbers sake is a complete waste of time, unnecessary, wasteful. Okay, so hopefully that gives you uh, some uh, tasks for doing next. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for uh, for listening to me. Uh, on you know, sometimes I do get a little bit more passionate than than um, you, you may be used to from uh, from s s people around you. 
I love business and I really want my clients to succeed and I want them to work less hard for more money because that is what they took the massive risk of going to business for themselves for. And if you, I don't apologize for talking, uh, for talking passionately and quickly about this because it's important. Your time is valuable. My time is valuable. And I want to get you this information and I want you to feel as passionate as I am and more so for your business because it is critical and important to you. If you liked what you heard today and it's inspired you a little bit to think a little bit differently about what you're going to do tomorrow or even today, depending on what time you're watching this, I'd like you to click the like button. I'd like you to share this with other people. And depending on where you're, where you're seeing this, if you're seeing it on Facebook and stuff, share it, please, and comment on it. If you're seeing it on my website and there's a share or comment button or like button, or please, please uh, put some information in there. Uh, you know, it helps me stay on track. It helps me do more of these. It keeps me motivated, uh, as I hope to keep you motivated to keep doing better, either through the blogs or through the Profit Multiplier program. In the meantime, uh, I wish you every uh, success. If uh, you'd like to connect with us, uh, the best thing, if you you don't know us from Adam, check a few of our blogs out, make sure you like the way we work and what we stand for. And if you do, then uh, the best place to start is a 10 minute quick chat, because that gives us 10 minutes to find out a little bit about each other. They are fast paced, solutions based. And at the end of that, I'll either be able to tell you, yes, I think we may be able to help you, or I'm sorry, we can't, but point you in the right direction. Okay, so uh, I look forward to, to your success story. In the meantime, you take care of yourself. Goodbye.